Well, go on, George. You must have something to say for yourself. Tell us why you were pretending to be a, what was it, counter-espionage agent? You were lying, I heard you. I thought you were supposed to be my caretaker, George. You and your sister, Yvonne. Caretaker? I hired them from an employment agency to take care of the estate during my absence abroad. Is that correct, George? Yes, that's what we were doing. Apparently, you've been doing more than that. He drugged me. Look. Stop! But it wasn't loaded anyway. Are you all right? I feel very weak. Don't you think it's time you told me your name? My name is Raven Whitney. Raven? What an extraordinary name. And what an extraordinary face. Well, goodbye, Mr. Foley. And hello, Raven. Police. My name is Ian Devereaux. D-E-V-E-R-E-A-U-X. Yes, with an X. I'd like to report a... Well, I don't actually know what. A kidnapping? A confidence trick? I think you'd better come over and find out. Mr. Bryson. Oh, no, thank you, Gunther. Well, perhaps you'd like a taste of the reds. A very fine burgundy from Burgundy, I guess. <laughs> the lady said, no, Gunther, I will have some of the burgundy from Burgundy, however. Yes, Mr. Whitney, with pleasure, sir. Thank you. Oh, come on, try some wine. I've, I've got a toast to make, a very special toast. Skyler, I'm practically under the table from the champagne before dinner. Oh, come on, have some. I've been waiting for just the right moment. All right, all right. That's fine, thank you. The floor is yours. To the new owner of WMON TV. Oh, Sky, is it true? What yeah. happened? I may be just a wee bit premature, but I don't think there are going to be any problems at all. I just got a letter from April. Here, let me read it to you. From April Scott. And she says, blah, 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 blah. yeah, I thought that I'd write you directly concerning your offer to purchase the television station. As I'm sure Geraldine has told you, I do feel it would be only right for me to divest myself of an enterprise in which I play no active part whatsoever. However, Geraldine does play an active part in it, and a recommendation of you as a purchaser means a great deal to me. All I want is your assurance that Geraldine will be guaranteed her position as station manager for as long as she cares to keep the job. If that condition is met, I can see no obstacle to this purchase. And you have no objection, of course? Oh, of course not. I mean, I adore Geraldine. She knows the job as well as anybody possibly can, probably better than I ever will. So I want to make a toast to the new owner of WMON. Oh, congratulations, Guy. And I hope that you enjoy it. Thank you. It's just what I need. I need a responsibility like this. I need to involve myself in something like this. I need to get away from the pleasures that I've been having. You know, I mean, it seems that after a while, even the joys of spending money begin to pale, don't they? Are you asking me? I'm sorry. But there was a time when you didn't have to worry about money, wasn't there? Yeah, but that was a long time ago. And besides, what child worries about money? It's a grown-up problem. Oh, but you're a grown-up now, and quite a beautiful one at that. You know, there are times when I wish you wouldn't have to worry 
This is just the sort of challenge that I need. I need to involve myself. I need to control things. I need to control destinies. Certainly a television station is going to allow you to do that. Just as a newspaper would have. Maybe even more so. Yeah. Especially in the news department. That's where I'm going to involve myself first. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm uh, so terribly sorry about the delay with the salad, Mr. Whitney, but uh, Wilhelmina did not like the looks of some of the lettuce. A lesson in courtesy, Gunther. Hmm. You come in here to apologize to me. There is a lady present. Uh, yes, I noticed that. Uh, please pardon me, Miss Bryson. <clears throat> That's quite all right, Gunther. The salad looks marvelous to me. Uh, Wilhelmina was wondering if I might not serve Madel the Madeline now. <clears throat> <laughs> I think you mean madrilen. Yeah. It's a cold soup? Cold soup? Ah, uh, uh, yes, a rather chilly soup. Yeah, the soup uh, sounds fine, Gunther. Why don't you bring that on? Yes, sir. I never said he was sophisticated. <laughs> so what do you think? Am I getting myself in over my head, taking on the TV station or what? Oh, Skylar, not at all. I think that... It's a great idea, and you're intelligent and you're enthusiastic about it. If you go in admitting that you don't know very much and, and are willing to learn from the people who are there, then... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sounding preachy. No, it just sounds like good advice. Yeah, but who am I to give you advice? All right, let's call it encouragement. Okay. My encouragement is that I think that you can do a wonderful job if you work at it. If I change my ways and settle down, you mean? No, 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 I didn't use the phrase settle down. That connotes stagnation. No. No, no, actually that's exactly what I have to do. I have to settle down. I need... I need something more. Not the Madrilan, Mr. Whitney. Who? Oh, beg your pardon. The Madrilan, Miss Bryson. Thank you, Doctor. See, I need... Something more, Valerie, than, than just the things around me, than furnishings and walls and things that go into making up a house. I need something else. Do you know what I mean? To be honest with you, Scott, I... Oh, oh! oh! Good grief, Gunther, oh. you clumsy idiot! Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Whitney. I mean, I'm sorry, Miss Bryson. It's quite uh, Please, here, uh, let me help you with that. I... No, um... I think I'd better just go and clean myself up. Excuse me. Gunther, you damn fool. What's gotten into you? Uh, well, hey, I said I was sorry, Mr. Whitney. You also said that you would enjoy serving dinner tonight. You didn't say you were a clumsy dolt. All right, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Whitney. No kidding. It's just that... Well, I got a little shaky because of the drift of the conversation. The conversation? told you you could listen to the conversation. Well, I couldn't help myself, could I? I mean, there you were, sitting there talking to the lady about marriage. I made no mention of marriage. <laughs> well, it certainly seemed to be uh, the punchline to me. Well, look, Mr. Whitney, I know it's not my business, but I hate to see you rushing into something. That's all. You may take the salad, Gunther. Tell Wilhelmina to serve the next course, whether she thinks it's ready or not. Is that clear? Uh, yes, Mr. Whitney, that is very clear. Uh, Mr. Whitney, I was wondering if I might ask a question. If it has to do with Miss Bryson, you uh, can no, it save it. No, it has to do with Miss Alexander. What is it? Uh, well, I was wondering if you intend to get that diary back, you know, the one that Spencer gave to her? You may go to the kitchen now, Gunther. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Whitney. Well, it's, uh... It's all right, Gunther, the Madeline washed out. Oh, I'm so pleased, Miss Bryson. Well, I'm glad things are okay now, Val. If you get back to what we were saying, I... I think that we should talk about your new career. Sounds fine to me, sis. Okay, so let's have it. Is there going to be a hearing or not? Of course, there's always a hearing after you shoot somebody you know, man. Yeah, well, you don't seem to be uh, expecting any great hassle out of this one. Well, there shouldn't be. It was strictly self-defense. And there were two witnesses, including our good friend Eddie Lorimer. Uh-huh. 
I uh, don't think I'd like the idea of him testifying for me. Uh, maybe, but he's already signed the deposition. Claims that Joe Bulmer robbed him for some getaway money after he shot Chad Sutherland. Yeah, well, supposedly he was actually holding him at gunpoint, at least according to what the chief says. He sure was. He pulled it on me as soon as I walked into the ante room. Uh, but you got him first, huh? Yeah. I really wish it hadn't worked out that way, but it did. Especially after finding out what happened up at the Raleigh Castle. That guy could have answered some questions for yeah, us. That's right. Anyway, you know I don't like to use my gun. Yeah, you and uh, most cops. Too bad the public doesn't know about it. I mean, they never hear about all the cops who have to go through psychological therapy just because they shot some punk. See, that reminds me, my hearing with the Internal Affairs Department is tomorrow. How would you like to be a character reference, though, buddy? <laughs> You're taking a chance with me. I know you too well. Ah, that's true. By the way, have you talked to Dee Dee lately? I mean, I've sort of been wondering how she's holding up under all this. No, I haven't. Um, she went to see her brother Troy this afternoon. I thought I'd give her a little space before I get in touch, you know? Uh. I'm sorry to be so uninformative, officer, but there's really very little I can tell you about the situation. And all I know is that this guy Foley took me here and did horrible things to me. Oh, Blake, I'm glad you're here. Is this... Yes, it is. Chief Derek Mallory, Monticello Police Department. Chief, I am honored. Why do I rate such attention? Derek! Raven! Oh, I think uh, I understand. What is going on here? I heard you were in trouble again. Isn't it insane? What is it about me that attracts all these lunatics? I don't know, Raven. I don't know. Excuse me. You are Ian Devereaux? That's correct. And partly responsible for the lady's trouble, I'm afraid. Oh, how is that? Well, for one thing, this is my house, and the people who brought her here were in my employ. Wait a minute. Are you saying you hired these people? Well, not to kidnap and abuse beautiful young women. All I asked them to do was to look after the estate while I was abroad. The rest was strictly their own business. What was their business? I mean, uh, who were these people? I don't know. He called himself Foley. Foley? Yes. George Foley? Yes, and he said he was a counter-espionage agent. For crying out loud. You apparently know more about this than I do. Who was the other one? I don't know. Some woman. She was older than he was. She was supposed to be his sister. Her name is Yvonne Foley, but judging by the lies I've been told, I wouldn't vouch for it. Just what lies have you been told? Well, it was all done by mail. Does that make it mail fraud? I don't think so. I guess you were abroad. Could I ask you what you were doing abroad? Uh, conducting my business. I'm an investments advisor. Although I spend most of my time administering my own investments, that takes me to England and the continent four or five months out of the year. Huh. And that's where you've been? Yes, I've just returned. To a few surprises, not all of them unpleasant. Well, excuse me, but I don't understand. How does somebody get hired at such long distance? Well, I had another couple, a Mr. and Mrs. O'Connor. Unfortunately, Mr. O'Connor became ill, and they had to leave. They went to the agency to find me a replacement. Did you see any credentials, any references? Well, there were a few letters back and forth, but I didn't bother to keep them. They were written on the letterhead, though. Well, that doesn't matter. I guess he could forge those as easily as he forged his other credentials. Yes, but who are these people? And what do they want? Well, apparently they wanted your home as a base for their operations. He said it was a safe house. I'm sure it was a safe house for a while. I gather they didn't expect you back so soon. No. I wrote to them and told them I wouldn't be back until January, but I changed my mind. I'm a strong believer in destiny. You came back just in time to interfere with their activities hmm. yes um what were their activities and what were they doing well i don't think they were involved in counter espionage box but neither did sky neither of us could get in unless we had both keys well did you do that yes it was spencer barney's idea he said i could have half of whatever was in the box which was really a stupid idea i should never have done it why what was in the box nothing nothing but a diary diary jefferson brown's diary this could get interesting no it wasn't interesting at all there was hardly anything in it just a few entries that he made before he became sky whitney what did it say where is it i don't know you don't know what, what... What do you mean you don't know? Which question are you answering? Both! I don't know. I couldn't understand a thing what was in the diary, and I don't know where it is now. What did you see it last? Um, the man Foley had it. But that's why he brought me here, because he thought I knew what it meant, but I didn't. What kind of entries were in it? I don't know. Things like numbers and letters of QZB99, you know? Some kind of code? You know? I guess. And he thought that I could tell him what it meant, but I couldn't. It was just awful. They gave me this truth serum. And it's I just... all right. It's over now. It's over. Excuse me. Is there anything I can do? No, no. 
Come in, please. Well, I was wondering if I could help in any way. No, I will be taking Miss Alexander home, I think. Now, don't you think she's a little weak to be moved just yet? I am. I'm very tired. I think I could sleep for a week. Perhaps we should call her husband. Husband? What makes you think I'm married? Oh, but I thought you said... Sorry, my mistake. Well, if you have no husband to answer to, perhaps you'd like to stay here until you're feeling a bit better. <laughs>